Before I get into it guys, I'm pleased to announce that channel memberships are now live. For $2.99 a month, you can help to support the channel and get members exclusive content. You also get custom badges, emojis, polls, live chat features and more. All you've got to do is click the join button below, it's an alternative to joining Patreon. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Bad Batch video. So today we're going to be breaking down episode 7 Battle Scars. I usually save my review for the end but I just want to say I wholeheartedly loved it and in my opinion it's the best episode we've had since the premiere. I will expand on my thoughts of this episode later but first of all let's get straight into the breakdown. Back on Ord Mantel, the Bad Batch have been working for Sid as mercenaries, going on missions for her and getting paid. That's until the hooded figure from the end of episode 6 shows up at the bar, and as many of us suspected, it was Captain Rex. From this moment on, I just knew that the episode was going to take the show in a completely different direction. Rex is conversing with the group until he asks about Omega. He tells her he's never seen a clone like her before. Now this episode really puts Omega's identity into question. It's clear that Lucasfilm are hinting at something very unique about her, but I I think that's something that's going to be explored further down the line. I think we all really want to know if she's a force sensitive or a genetically engineered empath and whether or not her programming has some kind of evolution that we're yet to see. Now the most defining aspect of this episode was the subject of the inhibitor chips. Wrecker's headache begins again and Rex knows just how big of a deal this is. After Rex learns that none of them have had their chips removed, he reaches for his blaster. He tells them that their chips make them a threat. Rex agrees to help them get them out and later meets them on Bracca. Now it was a very interesting decision that they chose Bracca. As you know, Bracca was a junkyard planet first seen in Jedi Fallen Order. During the Clone Wars, Jarrah T'Pol and his Padawan Cal Kestis were stationed above Bracca in their Venator class Star Destroyer. Following Order 66, T'Pol was killed and Kestis crash landed on Bracca. While I've seen a lot of people talk about how we might see Cal in the next episode, he would be very young. In fact, he'd be the same age as Omega at this point and it would be too early for him to make an appearance. That said, I do think Cal Kestis does have a role in this story at some point. Now speaking of Bracca, by the time of the Empire, the planet was under control by the Scrappers Guild. The Scrapper Guild was established during the Clone Wars when the facilities on Bracca were optimised to efficiently dismantle and salvage capital ships, a process known as scrapping. Scrapping soon became the most profitable industry on the planet, with the Guild expanding and adapting its enormous scrapyards to handle the disposal of many types of ship. The mysterious workers that we see at the end of the episode are part of that guild. When Clone Force 99 arrive on Bracca, Rex greets them and takes them to a Jedi cruiser, similar to the one where he got his chip removed. On their way to the scrapyard, Rekka almost gets eaten by what looks to be a Dianoga. At first, I thought it was an Ibdis Maw which are native to Bracca, but the captions do say it's a Dianoga. Now this is a major callback to Star Wars A New Hope in the garbage compactor scene. During the rescue of Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker first realised something was alive in the garbage compactor. But shortly after his realisation, Omi, the female Dianoga, dragged Luke underwater. Han and Leia were unable to locate him but the Dianoga released him just before the walls began to close. So going back to the episode, the following scenes are probably the most powerful and dark ones we've seen in the show so far. When the Bad Batch prepare to have their chips removed, Wrecker's one fully activates and it's pretty terrifying. My heart was literally racing. He repeats many of the lines we've heard Crosshair say, such as good soldiers follow orders and you are in direct violation of Order 66. He also calls Omega, Hunter and Rex traitors and tries to kill them. Just before he gets to Omega, Rex saves the day with a stun blast. They're then able to successfully remove the chip from Wrecker and the rest of the group. Something truly touching throughout this episode but specifically in these scenes is how much love, loyalty and compassion Omega has. She truly possesses one of the biggest hearts we've seen in the galaxy. Now in the final scene, Rex is talking to someone through his comms device. In my opinion, this is Ahsoka. I know a lot of people want to see Commander Cody, Gregor and Wolf, but in this instance, he's in touch with Ahsoka Tano. I'm not sure if we're going to see Cody in this series, but it would be a shame if we didn't. If not, we might see his arc in Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is what all the rumours have been saying. We might see Ahsoka in this show, but it'll probably be at the end. So before expanding on my thoughts of the episode, let's talk about these scrappers at the end. They informed the Empire of the Bad Batch's whereabouts, and from here on out, all things are about to get hairy and 
very fast paced, we're definitely in for one hell of a ride, so let me finish with some final remarks. Every moment of this episode was intense and you just couldn't look away for a single second. It was focused, it was epic and visually stunning. In my mind, the quality of this episode is right up there with the Clone Wars Season 7 and some of the best animated Star Wars we've ever had. The pacing was spot on and they somehow were able to incorporate character development while simultaneously maintaining a riveting plot. For those reasons, amongst many others, this episode gets a 9.5 or even a 10 out of 10 from me. I have no complaints and while I would love every single episode to be 70 minutes long, it's not realistic for an animated series like this. So truly excellent stuff and I really can't wait to see what happens next week. I can't really predict with any kind of certainty where we're headed next time, but I think we're finally going to see an Imperial arc again. They used to bounce around between the two storylines, but we haven't seen Kamino, Tarkin or even Crosshair in quite some time. I definitely think the show is getting darker and the next time we do see Crosshair, it's going to be far more rigorous and more intense. He's a commanding Imperial right now and even if we do get some kind of redemption arc further down the line, it's most likely not going to be straight away. I think he will confront the Bad Batch again and they'll do everything they can to trap him so that they can remove his chip, but that is not going to be an easy task and probably not right away. The pieces of this puzzle do have structure but we've only got seven of the many many pieces that we need to help paint this picture. I would love to speculate further on where it goes from here and I probably will be making some follow-up videos in the week but honestly guys it's so hard to know and that's what's so great about the show. It leaves us hanging each week and it could go in so many different directions and we're all going to be surprised. Surprised. So I'm going to finish by saying that I love this series so much and I'm so hungry for more every time an episode finishes airing. I think just like other series, The Bad Batch is a Trojan horse in terms of the way that it presents itself. Because when I first heard that they were making a series on this one group of elite clones from the Clone Wars, I was really skeptical and I really didn't know what to expect. I think a lot of us were in that same position, but now that it's out, it's very clear that the show has so much depth and in a sense it's a gateway into so many other stories at this point in the timeline. Just after Order 66. I mean, just look at how many big characters have shown up so far and how many more there are to come. The show is just full of surprises and that is one thing I absolutely adore about Dave Filoni. He knows how to entertain Star Wars fans and let's be real here, we're not a very easy bunch to please. We all have very high expectations and yet he exceeds them with everything that he makes. Obviously, I give major credit also to Jennifer Corbett, Brad Rao, Dee Bradley Baker, Michelle Ang and everyone else who works on the show. But I digress. What do you guys think of today's episode? Did you enjoy it? And if you enjoyed today's breakdown please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you're new my patreon link is in the description and i will see you all in the next one i'm star wars meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day no matter where you dwell in the galaxy have a good one